guys, as always, thanks for stopping by the old Applebee's part two. Thanks, I said. Is Congress listening? That's a great question. And I want to go through some things right now. A letter that has been written to the AFT. And I'm going to name names, tell you who signed this. And I think it's interesting. I really do. But the question really is Congress listening. And that is the question of the day. Maybe, maybe, maybe this might be some good news. Or at least it's good conversation point. Buckle up. Here we go. Today's episode is brought to you by my friends over at CMMG. I show them to you all the time. Check this out. This is all from their social media. Gorgeous Resolutes and Banshees and Endeavors. Y'all know I love them. My favorite, I think, besides the fact that they run, is how they look. Check out that Cerakote. Pick out your favorite size, caliber, and favorite color when you head over to CMMG. You know what the, and to each of you all, thank you. I want to say Gorlami, but I've been saying that a lot lately, so not Gorlami. <laughs> Thanks for the thumbs up. Appreciate y'all. All right, the question is, is Congress listening? Now, we're in a day and age right now where the child sniffer and his nonsense party has all of it, the House, the Senate, and the White House. And then now we've got the AFT pushing this new radical, I know it's not a word I use very often outside of talking about Teenage, teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but radical levels of reform and redefinitions. I said yesterday that the AFT comments are still open, so jump over there and leave your comment. Also, while I'm on it, thank you to the brother yesterday that said yesterday's entire episode was worthless. You make me feel like a million bucks. But right now, we've got the, the AFT pushing these redefinitions, and a group from Congress has penned and sent a letter to Marvin Richardson. He is the acting AFT director. I'm going to go through a little bit about that letter, but let me tell you who actually wrote it. And shout out to these men and this woman that actually wrote this letter. They are pushing back on the, the whole redefinition that's going on right now. And their challenge is, and their question is, and their statement is that the AFT is now usurping, it's a great word, usurping the power of Congress. The letter was written by Andy Biggs of Arizona, Jim Jordan of Ohio, Louis Gormit, 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 can't read my own writing from Texas, Greg Stubbe, I think it's Stubbe from Florida. I talked about him one time before and I didn't know. And literally a thousand Florida people, I'm surprised they're even literate enough to be able to type. But they typed it out, I'm being mean today. They typed it out, I think it's Stubbe, but Greg Stubbe from Florida. Tom Tiffany from Wisconsin, Victoria Sparks from Indiana, Scott Fitzgerald from, also from Wisconsin, that's two. And Burgess Owens uh, from Utah, so that's pretty cool. So this group of congressmen and congresswomen, congressional representatives, have penned this letter, sent it over to Marvin Richardson, and they quote, they're talking about the expanding definitions and the redefinitions that are messing things up, and they're, they are positing that the ATF is moving, quote, well beyond the authority granted to the agency in any applicable federal statutes. And they also go on and they say that they are now trying to create, quote, a new definition to regulate privately made firearms without statutory authorization from Congress to do so. So we have this pushback going on, and I think it's fantastic. I told you all this just the other day, that the GOA feels like the Senate is listening to Americans. Now this letter, I think, shows us that maybe the Congress is listening. Now, this is the part where I get a little bit cynical because it's not so much, at least from reading it, that they are, that they are listening to us. It's that they're pushing back that the AFT is usurping the power of Congress. So it's less about our voice and it's more about congressmen and a congresswoman saying, no, 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 we're the ones that have the power to legislate. Now, they're right. They're 100% right about that. It's one of the problems that I have with the AFT and any of the government agencies that create regulations that affect us. They don't create laws, but they do create regulations, definitions, redefinitions, expanding definitions that turn... I know y'all don't like when I say law-abiding. Just let it be. Let it be what it is. Law-abiding law-following, rule-following men and women and turn us into criminals, bang, overnight. 
And that's one of my one of my comments here that I wrote down. I wrote down three things. First, this is about power. I don't think it's that much that they're listening. I think it's more about power. That's my words. And it's about Congress congressional power being usurped. Two, these folks aren't elected at the AFT. And I want to always remind us about that. That's the thing that I was pushing about a second ago. They, they are not elected. A lot of these government agencies make these definitions and rules that affect us. They are non-elected. We don't live in a democracy. We live in a constitutional republic. Republic. We're supposed to be represented by the folks or the folks that make our laws are supposed to rep be representing us and speak for us. And then finally, the question, and my question of the day is, are they listening? It's what I open with, but are they listening to you and to me? What do you think? Got a good list there from Arizona, Florida, Wisconsin, and others. I think it's fantastic. I love this letter. I love that, that they are getting some pushback at the old AFT. And because Biden's, and it, it's not Biden's policies, it's the DNC's policies are bleeping garbage. Let me know down below what you think and do you think they are listening to you? I will be back tomorrow for the uh, Spicy Friday. It's going to be a fun. See y'all tomorrow. Bye.